Yes, yeah, sweetheart. All tuned up, ready to go. You got your hat? Mm-hmm. Well, then, what do you say? Let's go. Okay. How oh, I love to drive my Buick With my love sitting by my side Pretty girl and shiny Buick Fills a fella with so much pride Driving down the road on Sunday With my car and my heart riding high For I know that very soon We'll take a honeymoon My Buick for my love and I Country, you and I, away from all the crowd, as long as we're together, I'm riding right Hi, I'm Arlen Roth, and welcome to Big Beautiful Buicks. We're just as gay as we possible. But good enough for father, yeah. and good enough for mother, mm -hmm. is good enough for me. Oh, I love to drive my Buick With my love sitting by my side Pretty girl And shiny Buick mm -hmm. Fills a fella with so much pride Driving down the road on Sunday With my car and my heart riding high For I know that very soon We'll take a honeymoon, my Buick Okay, here we are at the Buick National Meet in Batavia, New York. Just getting things going here. Looking at some 53 Skylarks. I believe this one is in a terrace green. Here we have a balsam green 53 Skylark. Here's your Kelsey Hayes wire wheels. Again, this is early on in the show and people are just getting set up, so there's not too many cars on the field yet. Here we have a nice side view of that beautiful 53 Skylark. See they have the side emblems. Here's this nice darker green one. Model 76X. Beautiful car, this one. As you can see, the side spears are flush on this car, which none of the other models that year had. Actually, it was revised in 56 with the Roadmaster, with a flat um, stainless on the side. This is a very nicely restored car with full leather interior. Here we see the front, beautiful grill. This was the last year of the stainless steel grill. I believe after this they went to all chrome on the teeth, the toothy part. We see some nice details here. Beautiful front end treatment on this car. There's the bombsite hood ornament, which was introduced that year. Really a nice car. We'll be seeing um, a green one like this later on with a red and white interior, which I think is an interesting combination. We had some wild color combinations in those days, as you know, I'm sure. Nice white painted in the wheel wells there, which is an accent that's used a lot on the 53 Skylarks. Another shot of the Kelsey Hayes wheels. This was the first year they were introduced, and they were an option through 1956 in all Buicks. Here's a very pretty 53 Mandarin Red 53 Skylark. I believe that's what it's called. That was sort of their medium maroon color of that year. There was a darker maroon called Victoria Maroon, I believe. It's also a very nicely restored car. Take a look at the beautiful leather interior and the very pretty dash, which is minus the Dynock decal on this particular car. Probably going to put it in someday, or maybe not. Okay, here's a Baffin Green 54 Skylark. Baffin Green was the darkest green that year, metallic paint. As you can see, it's a totally different car, beautiful car that year. We have the different style hood ornament as well, the V, which was introduced in 54. You know, a lot of guys chrome these, chrome the battery trays themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can actually get those chrome? These here, I have, brand, I have a brand new pair in a box. Wow. With the Buick number on them. Right, because they were showing it off in the show thing, like the, the one that's in the lobby here. Right. They were showing it with the chrome, yeah. You could 
could order it that way as an accessory. Mm -hmm. Hollywood custom made them for Buick and Buick put their part number on and sold them. Hmm. You can probably see it better on this side here. You know mine's got a white air cleaner? Yeah, they paint they painted that. You saw that, that's right, yeah. yeah. That's all you know, you take the engine and, sure. and oh, yeah. strip it down and detail yeah. that car out. But I'll tell you, even the way it is right now, it's not bad. No, no not too bad looking. Not at all. Okay, here's that lovely trunk ornament on the 53 Skylark. And now we see the front of the other one. Here's a very pretty 55 Special that just showed up. Two-tone, black and white. The two-tone was introduced in a big way that year. That's a beauty. Thank you. I drive it every day. Very pretty. Nice wheel, too. Okay, here we have a lot earlier Buick. It looks like a 1930. Beautiful Phaeton model. Four-door convertible. The side-mounted tires. These cars are really something. I love that two-tone treatment, and the grille is just absolutely enormous. Here you can see the uh, hood ornament, which was sort of a flying lady treatment. And now on to another model with the wooden wheels, as you can see. This was a really beautiful era for Buick. Another two-tone treatment, the fenders, darker color than the body. This is a two-door convertible coupe. Now we've got a four-door sedan, also with the side-mounted tires. Looks like around a 1930 also. You can tell by the license plate. And that's really a lot of chrome. 1932, 1932 model. Love those antique license plates. It's got a spotlight on it. And beautiful white wall tires. Here's an interesting treatment on the uh, spokes with the yellow, yellow paint. Another four-door sedan, beautifully restored. Okay, here's a 1940 convertible, lovely That's yellow. That's probably a super. And it's got those amber fog lights for a nice accent. Beautiful grill that year. Now we see the dash with that engine turning. Almost diamond-like finish. The side mounts are very pretty and the red wheels. Just a gorgeous car. I personally have a Woody of this vintage, a 1940 estate wagon, which is the first Buick estate wagon. Quite a rare car. Here's a 40 four-door convertible. And we're jumping around a little bit as we go back into the uh, late 20s or 30s. And uh, this four-door Phaeton is probably a roadmaster, I would gather. There we, again, we see the engine turn dash, red leather interior, beautifully restored, of course. And I just love these cars in yellow with the red accent. It just really is a nice combination. Now we're getting into the 37-38 era. This is the 1938 cars. There's a four-door Phaeton. A beautiful sort of gray, metallic gray. These are real gangster cars. Could just picture Elliot Ness in one of these. Or chasing somebody in one of these anyway. Here's the 40 again. And this is just the early part of the show. And some cars just showing up yet. You know, they're not in their classes yet, really. Just okay, here's a lovely hood ornament. This is a little goddess that uh, Buick used for a couple of years. Very unusual, striking hood ornament. And the radiator grill. This is a 1928. There's one with the top down. And a nice maroon one. 
Beautiful car. These cars are just arriving here. Here's a nice lineup of 37 and 38 Buicks. Very popular years, I might add, because there are quite a few at this show. Here's a 1940. Nice 40. Sedan. Super. Here we have the front end treatment of that. And here's a beautiful Phaeton. Four-door convertible in maroon. And another four-door sedan, 1940. A lot of 40s at this show. Very popular year for Buick. And the convertible again. Here we have the 1941s. You can see the difference in the grill treatment that year. And a little bit more stylized, generally speaking, uh, of the body. And uh, also a very pretty car. Here's a 41 four-door convertible in a nice dark green. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. Probably a Roadmaster. Tan interior. There's a nice accent with that car. Here you see the fender skirts, which has sort of a futuristic design on them. And now the dash this year. A little different. Still has the engine turning, but it is a different design. Come around the back. See this beautiful paint job on this car. Uh, here's a rare car, a 1951. Roadmaster convertible in maroon with a beautiful tan top. This is a really super rare car. I don't think I've ever seen one like this, particularly in this condition, of course. This car drew a lot of attention at the show. Just don't see them hardly at all, ever. A Buick 8, that's what it says on the upper grill bar. This, of course, is before they went to the V8. This was still a straight eight engine. And speaking of V8s, here's uh, the 53 Skylark again, which had the first V8 that year. First Buick V8. Very clean engine here. Totally detailed. And the front grill treatment again. The Roadmaster Anniversary model, 76X, was the official designation of this car. And there are the Kelsey Hayes wire wheels, again with the red, white, and blue and gold insert, which had actually 14 karat gold in the middle. And here's the interior full of cleaning materials, as this person is still cleaning up their car, getting ready for the show. A lot of people drove very long distances with these cars. Uh, they got pretty dirty along the way, as I can attest to with my car. I had a lot of heavy rain going to this trip. Now coming around the back. Here's that trunk ornament again, which if we get a close-up, you can see that it is a Roadmaster. Even though it's a Skylark, that year it was designated as the Roadmaster. First and foremost, here's the door, the inside door. You can see the hydraulic window switches. Here's the center, gold, 14 karat gold center on that steering wheel. A beautiful dash. I think one of the most beautiful Buick dashes of all time is a 53. Here's a Victoria Maroon 53 Skylark. That's their darkest maroon color of that year. And this color was used for a number of years and was discontinued in 1954. Just a beautiful car. Very classy color, I think. And Matador Red, there's a 54 Skylark in two-tone, which was something that really never happened that year. And a 55 Super, black and white. Big car. Here's a nice dark blue metallic 53 Skylark with the Continental Kit. Continental Kit was a dealer add-on accessory 
not an actual Buick accessory that was offered that year, but I think it looks really pretty on this particular model. You can see this car is in very nice condition. It has the original Dynock decal along the dash there. You can tell by the sort of yellowed color that it has. And the blue and white leather interior that's been restored. Here we have that million dollar grin. Just looking at all the different colors. There's a very impressive lineup of uh, 53 Skylarks at this show, and uh, it's pretty breathtaking to see all of them together. There's even more coming later on. There's a beautiful yellow one and a white one. They had lovely colors that year, and I think the 53 Skylark looks good in just about any color you can paint it in. Okay, here we've got a cleanup job happening here upon just arriving on a beautiful white 53. And look inside the trunk, the Continental kit here. The wire wheel is also mounted, of course, in the Continental kit. Take a look down the side at those beautiful custom lines. There's a red and white interior. Totally restored. Beautiful car. Okay, here's a 54, very rare car, in Condor Yellow, 54 Roadmaster Convertible. Practically a one of a kind, this car. Really, really striking. It's got a cream and black interior. That's what they called those colors. It was cream, not yellow. And the dash. This was the first Buick with the red liner speedometer. Come around the back here. This is a New York State car. Really, really pretty. Now we've got a yellow and red combination on a 47 or 48 model. Very classic combination for Buick, those colors. With the red accent. It's a little bit of a softer yellow than the 54 color we just saw. Here's a 55 century convertible in Titian red, which is actually more of a maroon. It's got the optional wire wheels. This was also the first year that the Century got the four porthole designation as opposed to three the previous year, 1954. Very similar body style to the 54, but a very different grill, totally different grill. And those wire wheels really help out any car. They really do, they're really sharp. Okay, here's a turquoise and white 55 special hard top, two-door hard top. Also very nicely done. Lots of chrome this year. This particular year was very heavy on the chrome. Uh, 56, there was less. Here's a 56 in blue and white. And uh, different, more of a V'd treatment on the actual grill. Now here we, here we see the engine. This is a special engine compartment is totally detailed on this car very very clean and here's a 55 Roadmaster convertible very very rare car and the Roadmaster has these little gold accents in 55 I love the hood ornament and the hood letters if you notice they are actually gold it's kind of an anodized treatment there this was done in 1955 only, with that particular model. This is a very, very rare automobile. Very powerful, too. Looks nice with the black top.
And here's a 56 special, two door hard top. Looks really nice with the windows down. There's a convertible look. They tried to get that convertible look. There's the dash. There was lots of chrome on the dash of the 56. And a restored interior. Now here's a rare car. It's a 56 estate wagon. And this, this color combination is actually called bittersweet and white. Here's a black and white one again, 55. Notice the difference in the grills and the front end treatment between the 55 and 56. I think the 56 was a little bit more of a refined look. Oh, this is incredible. This car is one of the ultimate 58 limiteds. Now here we have a whole lineup of them, actually, a whole lineup of 58s. Here's the back of that wild 58 limited. You see the beautiful, beautiful taillight treatment here. That's also unique only to the Limited that year. The other 58s didn't have that same treatment. And the louvers going along the side. There's tons of chrome on these cars. Very expensive to restore and keep up. But they're getting very, very collectible. And um, here's one with wire wheels, which I don't think works too well on the car, but somebody put them on there anyway. There's a very pretty black one with a red interior. This time there's dual bomb sights with the V. And the V also in the middle of the hood. A wild looking grill. Very, very aggressive look, mean looking car. And uh, the 58 Buicks had a lot of problems and they came under a lot of criticism, but I love them now. They're just beautiful, beautiful cars. Must have a ton of chrome on them, really. Beautiful, 58 limited. Only 858 produced. Okay, now we've on to the 59s. As you can see, the grill was still pretty wild, but it's a different treatment. I believe they called it the Dynastar grill that year. I love the 1959 Buicks. I think that they were very striking in appearance and by far the prettiest um, 59s of the entire okay, you can go ahead. General Motors line. Also, this year Buick changed their names. They uh, ended up with Invictus, the Sabres, and um, Electras instead of Roadmasters, Centuries, and Specials, and Supers, and things like that. So Buick was going through a lot of changes in 1959. And, uh, you can see that the back end, those sort of bat wings, were really very prevalent, as they were in the 59 Chevys and other 59s as well. Okay, back to 58 a little while here. Here's that beautiful rear deck again on a black 58 Limited convertible. Limited was also available in a two-door hardtop and a four-door hardtop. Here we have a lineup of those incredible rear ends. <laughs> Not that rear end, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the cars, of course. And as you can see, those 58s are really dramatic. Uh, here we have a pretty 1960, either an Invicta or the Sabre convertible in Tampico red. And back to the 58s again with all that chrome. This car is a totally restored car, as are many of these. Here are some 60 convertibles. And it's a refinement of the design from uh, 1959. And the 1960s are preferred by a lot of uh, Buick lovers. I think this was a beautiful year. Here's a yellow one with a green interior, which I think is a great combination for that year. Very pale, soft yellow with a white top. Lovely car. It's got the three portholes, which designates that it's a Le Sabre or an Invicta, as opposed to the Electra, which would have um, four holes on the side. You can see the front is similar to the 59, but it's much more subtle. Okay, here's a 61 convertible. 
in red and white. And uh, these models are actually pretty scarce. Um, very good cars, very high performance cars. There's a couple of four doors. A lot of 61s came to this show. 61 is getting more popular. Here's a 57, going back in time a little bit. A lovely um, 57 two-tone for sale. This is a super hard top. There's a nice black one. That's a Roadmaster. And this is a Buick Senior car, this particular two-tone convertible Roadmaster. Just a beautiful, beautiful car. That is actually called Garnet Red. Here's a 53 Woody Wagon, and uh, it's the last year that they used any wood. Now we're scooting around here to some 56s. Here's a green one, nice two-tone 55. Sort of a beige with uh, Titian Red combination. And the basic four-door pillar sedan. Okay, we're getting back to the Woodies here. Here's a lovely 53 Woody. Actually, I'm sorry, it's a 52. 52. And uh, this is in a nice Victoria Maroon. Very rare car indeed. Here's a 1950 with what they call the Waterfall Grill. It was a one-of-a-kind grill that year, and all of them are individual pieces. Here's a lovely 49. 49 is one of my favorite years. There goes a 56 driving by, just coming into the show. Back to the 50s and 49s. And speaking of the 49s, I think I have a film right now that I'd like to show you and share with you, going back in time a little bit with Buick. striding, spirited. There's greatness in their brilliant styling. Greatness in the surging flow of their fireball power. The firmness of their grip on the road. The level, buoyant comfort of their matchless ride. For these are Buicks, proud bearers of a rich tradition. A tradition of lively action, stock dependability, faithful, friend-winning service to their owners. It's a tradition that traces back through giant factories and busy assembly lines to the tan brick walls of Buick's great new engineering headquarters, the finest engineering lab in the motor car world. Unique in the caliber and vastness of its experimental and testing facilities. Unique in the developing of its engineers, designers, and craftsmen to Buick's standards of excellence in performance and Buick's advancing values. This is where today's better automobiles are born in the minds of Buick engineers, then reared to brilliant maturity through the studied steps of endless experiment, the torture chambers of endless tests, and the final refinement that confirm with each successive model the confidence in the Buick slogan, when better automobiles are built, Buick will build them. Now, another new Buick has taken shape. It's a great new Buick, tough and sturdy in its metals sleek and flowing in its lines. So we give you the man best qualified to tell the story of the brilliant new Buick Special, our chief engineer, Charlie Chain. It's a big day for all of us when the long months of engineering work, styling, testing, and production are finally finished and we can put a new Buick on the road. You've waited a long while for this new special, ever since the end of the war. How about waiting just a bit longer to let me tell you why I think it stands in a class by itself? You know we engineers are not noted for a tendency to go overboard about any new model. We are inclined to be conservative, possibly to maintain a proper balance with the enthusiasms of the sales and advertising men. But I don't mind leading with my chin when it comes to this new special. It's a sweetheart, a surefire winner in any highway style show. But it's even more than that. It's a Buick through and through. 
And that means the kind of an automobile that you can really go for when you've got your hands on its wheel. Come with me for a minute and let me show you what I mean. Here we are where Buick always shows up best and in its truest colors. You're in a new special, rolling along on a wheelbase of 121 and a half inches. That's a half inch longer, if you remember, than our previous job. You're experiencing here that same good feel you've known in other Buicks. You're feeling the effects of scientific weight distribution, good dynamic balance, perfectly calibrated shock absorbers, enjoying a ride made even better by moving the rear seat up ahead of the rear wheels. You have, in short, the same road poise and solid seat on the highway that makes the Roadmaster and the Super so light-footed yet firm. That's because the Special has the same engineering principles, the same structural balance and ease that give the Roadmaster a ride and road ability not surpassed anywhere at any price. That means, of course, such things as soft coil springs all around. Big coil front springs that soak up the shock and hammer of the road, and rear springs that have only one job, to cradle the car and its occupants in perfect comfort. It means the solid, non-yielding structural foundation that carries the weight of engine, body, and occupants from above, and takes from below the upward pound of unsprung weight reacting to the road's irregularities. It means handling ease from the sturdy design of the front end and extra soft tires on extra wide rims. Finally, it means power and brilliant performance. The same lively fireball power in 110 or 120 horsepower ratings, this time with a power to weight ratio even more favorable than that on the Super. So, from scat back getaway to effortless cruising and fast passing speeds, you're going to find this new special, like its distinguished big brothers, a real honey on the highway. Sometimes we may forget those things, because they seem like old stuff to us. But they are the things on which our success is based. And it's worth calling the roll to demonstrate how closely this lowest priced Buick follows our other series in its engineering fundamentals. Keystone structure of Buick strength. This steel ribbed X type center cross member frame is the foundation of every Buick chassis. Those deep section side rails, specially braced, are yours on the Super and the Roadmaster for Buick's rigid safety strength and greater riding comfort. And they're a Buick basic on this special too. Another foundation stone of Buick's structural stamina and luxurious ride is Buick's famous torque tube drive. It's the torque tube rigidly T-squared to the rear end driving members that transmits the thrust of the wheels to the total running structure of the car. With the axle held firm and true under all conditions of road stress or turns, there's no rear end swivel to rack the frame, no tendency toward rear end steering, no cause for the driver to fight the wheel. Words are fine, but let's test their meaning. Let Buick's own proving ground drivers demonstrate just one quality, extra safety, that is based in the torque tube principle. This baby is hitting 60, and that right rear tire is dynamite capped to blow in just a moment. Watch it. There, now watch again. No swerve. No rear end steering effect, no frightening grab astern, but full control from the driver's seat thanks to sound Buick engineering. Because torque tube drive takes all the burden of the driving thrust, we can cradle the Buick ride on big coil springs on all four wheels. Front and rear, the passengers ride buoyantly, level, in better balance. And that's a Buick basic found on the special. Then, Backing up the buoyant riding springs, the specially calibrated shock absorbers control the level floating effect of the Buick suspension all round, giving longer tire mileage and greater stability on the turns as well as extra comfort. 
Buick Safety Ride rims are extra wide, carry large, low-pressure tires. Tires which give you 1,166 more cubic inches of air than the tires on the previous special. And front-end engineering sets the wheels at a scientifically calculated angle to keep every Buick true on its course. See what I mean, gentlemen? The new special has all the basic chassis features that distinguish both the Super and the Roadmaster. The 40 series chassis is only slightly modified to accommodate the new body and several important features of the new styling. But we wanted to make this new special something really special in its field, so we made Dynaflow drive available as optional equipment. This makes the special the lowest priced American car with fully automatic transmission. No clutch pedal and no fixed gear ratios for torque multiplication. There is a lot of talk about what others may do, but the new Buick Special hits the lower price market with a luxury transmission right now. All across America, Dynaflow Drive has been sensationally successful on Supers and Roadmasters and driver enthusiasm goes deeper than freedom from clutch pushing and gear shifting that Dynaflow Drive provides. They like the toe-touch driving ease that Dynaflow brings them. They like Dynaflow's utter smoothness, its silky comfort, its convenience and simplicity of operation, the wonderful, sweet feel of the car that's propelled always through a cushion of spinning oil, never through rigid geared drive. And they certainly go for this safety feature originated in Dynaflow, a parking lock which holds firm, more securely even than conventional in-gear parking. All this, of course, in addition to the standard parking brake. Yes, the hottest thing in the Buick line, the biggest thing in cars since the self-starter is Dynaflow Drive. And it's still another Buick Basic available on the special. And so to the heart of performance in the great new Buick Special. It's that Buick Fireball valve in head straight eight engine. Yes, a valve in head engine. The kind you hear a lot of brand new talk about these days. Buick has been using this design principle for 46 years. Building a high compression engine that's more efficient size for size than any other type. And here's why. This is a cross section of the clean, simple valve in head Buick type cylinder. And this is a matched comparison with the L-head design. Note that unnecessary fuel gap at the top of the L-head. And you don't have to be an engineer to grasp the extra efficiency of the valve and head design. With the valves directly over the piston, each fuel charge flows down directly, freely, into the combustion chamber, concentrating a full, compact fuel charge under high pressure right around the spark plug. This is but one of the basic reasons why the valve and head engine converts fuel to power more effectively than the L head, even though engine size and compression ratio are the same. And that's why other motor manufacturers today are turning to the superior valve and head design. After firing, the exhaust gases escape freely, completely, through the equally direct overhead channel. Now let's look at another big advantage you get in the Buick valve and head engine, the fireball principle of combustion. See the shape of that piston head? That's there to control the flame wave better, to prevent detonation or spark knock. Buick changed the shape of the piston top to form the famous fireball combustion chamber. There's a rounded dome on one side of the cylinder top and a rounded depression on the side beneath the spark plug. Here, most of the fuel charge is concentrated so that the inrushing charge of fuel is shaped into a whirling, flattened ball, a fireball. And at the instant of highest compression, the spark leaps into the heart of the whirling, tightly compacted fuel ball. Combustion spreads quickly and evenly across and down. The piston goes down with extra push, extra force, extra thrust, and a higher percentage of the fuel's energy is transformed into lively, smooth Buick power. Yes, that's Buick's famed fireball action. Action that gives Buick power, its extra life, pep and ginger. Action that gives us not only high compression, but what's more important, high pressure power. 
That's the ever-lively, valve-in-head, fireball kind of power that distinguishes the trio of Buick Engineering Triumphs, Super, Roadmaster, and your great new special. You'll find hydraulic valve lifters, too, on this new job when it's equipped with Dynaflow Drive, no more periodic valve lash adjustment, no more tappet noise, even during warm-up. Precision balance within the engine controls the fireball inferno, vibrationless, smooth, and quiet. Micropoise balancing after assembly adds an extra insurance of smoothness. But to control engine vibration set up along the powertrain in the propeller shaft, axle, or wheels, that called for engineering skills of high order and the Buick development of unique, specialized engine mounts. Actually, it was a pretty tough assignment, but it's one that has been licked more effectively in the Buick than in any car I know. You know, most people do not realize it, but an engine has to be free to move around. It has to be free to wag its tail, to bob its head, or to roll. It does all of those things to meet varying operating conditions. So we set out to find mountings that would permit some of this freedom of motion, yet hold the engine securely and prevent the motion from being noticed by passengers in the car. We found that some way was needed to keep the engine, the drive shaft, and the wheels from vibrating in synchronization. It is just like an army marching across a bridge. Unless they break step, they can make the whole bridge sway in rhythm to their marching feet. So we set out to get those vibrations out of step by changing the mounting of the engine. We moved the main mountings up to points on each side of the engine. The rear mounting is located at the torque tube ball joint. With these new mounting points, we had to develop new engine mount cushions. These are thick pads of rubber compounded exactly to smother vibrations trying to pass through them. The result, of course, you already know from the Buicks you have been handling since the beginning of the 1948 model year. Much smoother, quieter riding, smoother clutch action, no engine torque reactions, less roughness on a hot engine idle. You'll find all of these plus values way ahead of the price class in the swell new 40 series specials. And there's a newly designed air cleaner and silencer unit on this new Buick. It has a larger silencing section, and the whole unit is now mounted crosswise to snuggle under the new special hood. There's a big improvement in the summer ventilation system, too, with larger straight-through air ducts that substantially increase air volume into the car. And as special equipment, there's even a new heater and defroster system. It's an entirely new principle of car heating and windshield and window defrosting, providing quicker heating and faster removal of frost from all windows. And this leads up to the body, its structure and dimensions, and there is certainly a great story here. These new Buick bodies are built throughout for rugged strength. Throughout their construction, the welders work their fire magic, fusing steel to steel, with the result that out comes a stout, seam-proof, weave-proof body that holds firm and true under the twists and strains of thousands of hard-driven miles. A body insulated thoroughly and scientifically against drafts and dust and water and heat and noise. A body with doors that swing shut with that solid, satisfying thud that spells sound strength and good craftsmanship. The new Buick Special has more total roominess than any other car on the market at its price or less. It's a car that fits the modest family garage as well as the modest family purse. A car that is three and a half inches shorter from bumper to bumper than the previous special and still has a 121 and a half inch wheelbase. Visibility is something else to cheer about in this new Buick. For instance, this new special has a huge curved windshield, three inches higher, seven inches wider. A glass area increase of 48% over the former special. And set in far slimmer corner posts that whittle down the blind spots. The backlight too has been made bigger and broader, something like nine inches wider at its maximum and two inches higher. 
but it's the inside dimensions that bring the good news. Back seat width has been increased 12 inches and front seat hip room more than three inches. Leg room is ample for six footers, more than 43 inches in the front and over 40 inches in the rear. And there's a full measure of headroom to boot in this sleek and lower car. This is the third great Buick predestined to help you make Operation 10550 a walloping success. Its lines are stirring, its character new but true to the traditional Buick identity. It's a Buick that's something really special with a striking radiator grill treatment entirely new to the industry. It's the hottest thing in any price class. And here it is, the new Buick Special. Condition for you, road tested to buy a view with better buy used car. How you doing? In my tire. The nail in your tire? Yeah. Now that's a real showpiece there. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to reality. Here we are at the show and we're looking at some beautiful 41s. There's a sedanette. And there is that four-door, that beautiful Phaeton convertible. Here are a couple of nice 62s. There's a 61, four-door hardtop. Exactly. And we have the GSX. The GSX, like I said. <laughs> now we have some mid-60s Wildcats. Hardtops, convertibles. Very pretty cars, and these had big engines. Here's a very pretty yellow convertible with a black top. This car is a very impressive car in person, totally mint. And here is a hard top. Here's an Electra 225 62 convertible, very unusual car with kind of a lavender pink interior, all original. And a white looks like a special. There's another special. Here we have a nice 65 Riviera. And we'll move on to some of the later boat tail Rivieras, the 71 to 73 models that are starting to become quite collectible. Here's one of the strangest greens you'll ever see, but certainly fits the era of this car. And uh, I think they're quite beautiful, actually, in their own way. And that Corvette Stingray rear deck that comes down, and that, why, that's the reason they call it the boat tail. Here's a nice maroon one, the white interior, looking absolutely pristine. Here's a 66, 67 Riviera. Very nice maroon color. Now we have a 65 Riviera one of the real classic styles in a dark green. And here we have the newest Buick, newest future collectible, the Riata. This one in black. This car is 
definitely destined to be a future collectible, in my opinion. And this year, they're coming out with a Roadster model, a little convertible of it, and it's actually a very pretty car. Haven't driven one yet, but I sure do like the way it looks. Here's a very nice, very strange racing car. Kind of an unusual addition to the uh, Buick collection here. It's a beautiful yellow convertible, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting to see what he has under the hood here. A little display with a model of the car. Always makes a nice touch at a show. And very, very straight. Very beautiful, beautiful car with the wire wheels, accessory wire wheels. Here's one of the 67, 68 type vintage. Also yellow with a black top. Now we're getting into the muscle car period here of Buicks. And as you can see, they've got some pretty mean looking tires on these things. Go down the line here. Cars of the 70s, cars of the late 60s, early 70s. Last of the cars with the big engines before the gas crisis changes. Now here's a 58 Caballero wagon. Very unusual car, and uh, this was a hard top style on an actual station wagon, and this is a rare car, and quite a behemoth, as you can see. Jumping back in time, we have a lovely 38 Buick Phaeton convertible here, and as you can see, it's in beautiful condition. Lovely gray color with the tan top. Suicide style doors. And coming around the back, we'll get the full treatment of this car. Very rare model. And the Buick 8 emblem on the trunk. Very unique design for that year. Here's another 38. This is a coupe with the side mounts. 37s and 38s have similar grills except the uh, 37 had a lot more lines in the grill. Here's another 38. Four-door sedan in black. Here we have a sister car to it. Those amber fog lights really make it. They really look good on the car. Here's one with the clear fog lights. Running boards, of course, on all these models. 1940 was the first year where they took off running boards. And we're going back in time even more here. This has a lovely two-tone treatment. Rumble seat, side mounts, the whole bit. Beautiful car. There's some etching there, as you can see, on the vent window. Nice hood ornament. Huge headlights. There's a lot of lights on this car. And horns. Here's the hood ornament, a close-up of it. Here we have the unique 36 Buick. And here is the 37 Buick with more lines in the grill than the 38. Here's a really big sedan, 36. As you can see, it has that unique almost beehive style grill. I think it's a beautiful grill that year. A lot of other car makes of that year had similar grills. Very unique car. There's your 37. Here's another 37 convertible, four door, with the side mounts. Here's a yellow 36 four door convertible. Boy, is that something. That is really a rare car. Beautiful, beautiful car. And there's a 36 with flags. Looking very patriotic. And a 56 now in Tahiti coral and white. I'm currently restoring a Roadmaster convertible in that um, color combination of 1956. Also, this is a very, very beautiful car. And uh, won a special award at the 88 Nationals 
which you'll soon see sitting in the back seat. As you can see, there's the beautiful, simple dash. There's the award he won, that cup. It's got a black and white leather interior. Very tasteful interior in 1956. And the two chrome strips that run down the trunk, which designated as a Roadmaster, they run down to the trunk handles. And this is really quite a car. It's a four-door hardtop. Has undergone a total restoration. There are the letters on the trunk saying 